It's time for a Wednesday matinee, or make that two, as Palmetto State foes square off in a midweek doubleheader. From Carolina Softball Stadium at Beckham Field, it's the 22nd ranked South Carolina Gamecocks playing host to the Charleston Southern Buccaneers. By Tennessee swept at Texas A&M the week before with the Gamecocks 22 and 10 overall, a pretty sterling non-conference resume. And that's why they are still ranked. As Maddie Lee is dialed up, how about that? A strikeout to open proceedings for Bettenbach. Carolina. So get it right back to her in the circle, two away. The strength of this 2024 team that head coach Beverly Smith talked about quite a bit in the preseason. We'll get back to that next half inning because the Buccaneers are retired three up, three down. Great start for Bailey Bettenbaugh as she makes her 70th career appearance as a Gamecock. Coming somebody who just seems to find ways to get on base, so setting the table once again today. This a pop out to short, however, one down. And so now South Carolina will turn it over to Riley Blampede. Here's the payoff. Drops low, Blampede on base. Ball just got accepted into PT school. So she will be attending that after she finishes her eligibility here at South Carolina. Tough play in center field for Wesleyan Jones. Eventually was able to, and they're, depending on which forecast you look at, chance there might be some more later. We hope it isn't. It's like the runner called safe, Christy. But plaques, but wax this one deep to left field, and that is how you break a slump. Two runs shot by Anaya Black, and it gets the Gamecocks going in the first. No doubt about this one, Carson. Absolutely. Black does a great job of battling in an 0-2 count here, does not take any pitch for granted, and continues to get her best swing off no matter how, where she is in the count. So hats off to her for being able to battle from an 0-2 count and still get a great swing on a ball and take it out of the park. You know, if you're South Carolina, you have to love that. Somebody that you know can swing for power. Finally getting one to go. And now Zoe Leno follows her. It's a line drive to left that Lacey Johnson handles. Almost back-to-back -back extra base knocks, but nonetheless, 14 games, nine hits. Grounded to short. Hustling in, Brooke Blankenship. Across the diamond, 6-3 for the putout. He's able to recover on the last batter faced. Prince, however, takes her to left field as the first base runner of the day for Charleston Southern on the Bucks' first hit. Watch of elite sport performance. This one flipped out towards short. Blankenship turns it, gets the lead runner. Interestingly enough, Charleston Southern has not grounded into a double play this entire season. And there's the one right there. Second single to left in this half inning, and the Buccaneers have something cooking with two outs. And a swing and a miss on strike three. Bettenbaugh strands a pair. And incoming Charleston Southern win coming here in 2012. A little tap from Gonzalez out to the gap in left center. Thought about extending that for a second. Wisely comes back, takes the base hit. Flares it out to left, tracking it is Johnson. And Henderson retired on one pitch. Good recovery by Youngie, preventing that back-to-back. -back. Absolutely opener at Texas A&M. Only four hits in the last 11 cents. This one might drop, and it does. Under the glove of Jones, Marissa Gonzalez thinking three, and she's got it. Here it comes again. In the air to center. Weslin Jones into the gap. That should be deep enough to plate Marissa Gonzalez and advance both runners, in fact. It's three to nothing, South Carolina. The 0-2 and right on cue. 
Don't think she's wearing a back brace, though. That was definitely a painful one for Cummings. Kyle's in the NCAA right now. You see both of them giving some trouble to Youngie today. Riley Blampede out to shallow center. Great play by Weslin Jones to prevent the fourth run from crossing home plates. Bree, Book, Bree Brooks, excuse me, the slap hitter has walked in the nine hole to lead off the third. The eight and nine out to open the game today. Lee whacks it, that is off third base and is fair. Line is moving for the Buccaneers in the third. Weslin Jones, that is caught by Anaya Black, I believe. Could there be a triple play here? Not quite, it's a double, I think. Triple play. None of the runners tagged up on the bunt, and Anaya Black caught it in the air. My goodness. Well, Bev Smith couldn't have asked for much more out of Jory Hurd, who on the second pitch in relief of Bailey Bettenbaugh induced this triple play that was cleanly fielded by Anaya Black on the fly. Neither runner tagged up. That runner's Maddie Lee, who had already well gone past second base without even tagging up at first. Play, that's something you don't see every day. I think Brooks just a little bit confused there. Maddie Lee definitely committed to taking off as young. Smith talking about being able to control their zones, being able to control what they're swinging at and not swinging at junk that the pitcher's throwing them here. Leslin Jones called back into action. As the fourth put out she's had in second year for the Gamecocks, big offensive threat for them. Trying to rediscover that form. Flicks this out once again to Jones. Back to back F8s and the Gamecocks go three up. Perfection. And a neutral site contest against Bethune Cookman. Pop out to second. Carly Shelton's there, one away. Saw time in both of those games. Hurd actually got the start in Saturday's series opener. Pitched three innings and then Margetko came in for seven in relief. So. Always be ready when your number's called. Prince, big stroke out to center, but playable for Riley Blampied and growing up, especially with four sisters. They, they each probably have their own unique traits and habits that distinguish them from their others. And Rabbit with a fly out to center this time. And frankly, it's just because Upstate has seen her so much. Henderson finds it right out to center. Weslin Jones stays active. Carly Shelton grounds it to second. Maddie Lee to Harper Schoenweiss. And Charleston Southern takes care of business. That seven straight Gamecocks retired by Youngie. On the field right now for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Um, who are looking to graduate either this May or in the summer. So that is absolutely awesome for them. And just a kudos to the girls who have put such in such hard work into. That's for sure. Right back to Jory Hurd. Gamecocks are taking care of their business defensively here. Diamond struck out facing Bettenbaugh her first time up. This time a slow roller to second. And the ground out does it. So each team with seven consecutive retired. Bettenbaugh and Hurd combined. Reaches for this one. On the ground is short. Blankenship nearly beat it with that speed. But it is a 6-3 put out. Taking on Ole Miss and the Velo accelerates once again as Cummings drives this mile high. Lacey Johnson calls for it, makes the catch. And now Youngie has gone through the entire lineup. It's fun to have nail-biting games like that, but it is anxiety-inducing for the players and coaches, so I know that they're hopeful for games like this where they can get ahead and stay ahead and not have to worry about the tight games coming back from behind. Let's see what she's able to make out of this. Good lick, but, and it does get down. Thought Jones was gonna chase it down. Instead, it's Kiana Jones outwitting 
Weslin Jones and plating Riley Blampied. That's exactly what South Carolina wanted, and they get it. It's 4-0. That's the kind of timely hitting and the hit strung together that the South Carolina Gamecocks have been looking for all season long. That right there is quality hitting with runners in, on base and getting a run into the plate there is huge for this South Carolina offense. So Kiana Jones with a big. And Black, can she make it two today? You bet. Six to nothing, South Carolina have a day, Anaya Black. Another great piece of hitting from Black here, and in my opinion, that looks very, very similar to the first home run of the day for her. Very same pitch, very same location. Hats off to her for being able to take a second pitch over the wall. Cox played as last season unfolded. I think one of the turning points was that Florida series here. Florida tough to beat anywhere. Gamecocks had not had a lot of success historically against the Gators and took two out of three from them. One was an all-timer as this one juggled and caught at second base by Maddie Lee. And that success begot more success. And next thing you know, the Gamecocks. Payoff to Brooks. Right to Shorts, Blankenship handles. Charleston Southern still looking for its first base runner since the third inning. From batters have grounded out quite a bit. Which I think is very interesting with her pitching rep because she typically lives high in the zone with her rise ball and then only comes down for change up. So it's been a bit interesting just to see how these Buccaneer hitters have responded to the types of pitches that she's throwing. And it makes me wonder if she's Here's Weslin Jones. Zoe Leno, nice play. And Hurd able to retire 10 consecutive Buccaneers. In Southern, they picked up the win. She pitched a complete game one hit shutout. Hard to do much better than that. But she is greeted with a base hit to right by Marissa Gonzalez. One pitch and one hit for South Carolina here, looking for insurance in the bottom of the six. From Lamb, you're probably going to see this, um, just as Youngie did, our, our previous pitcher. Carly Henderson up here for the Gamecocks, swings at the first pitch as well. So both Gamecocks coming up. Now Carly Shelton, who is one of two today, singled to advance the runner back in the second, grounded out in the fourth. As the runner takes off, Gonzalez, nine for nine now on the season. Little rabbit. Down into a bit of troublesome territory, but Emma Villascusa is there, tracking backward for Charleston Southern, two away. This speed is a lot different from what they saw versus Tennessee. Ready for that one, tries to deposit it, but it hangs up for Weslin Jones. And the Gamecocks will return to the field one more time to try to get three outs and get the victory in game one. Charleston Southern looking for a comeback on the backside of this break.